Greetings everyone, Bruno Luce here with GLB Productions. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Takamine CTP2 Cool Tube Preamp System. This is arguably Takamine's flagship preamp, and it was introduced in January 2004 at the NAM show, and advertised as being the first and only tube preamp system in an acoustic guitar. It contains a 12 AU7 dual triode vacuum tube and as you can see it is compatible with Takamine's sound choice docking port meaning that this preamp here is modular and can be swapped out if you desire with any of Takamine's other preamp systems for example the CT4B2 or the CT4DX preamp systems but today we'll be looking at the CTP2 cool tube system. Now one of the nice things that Takamine do is that when you purchase a guitar which has the cool tube fitted as standard from the factory, you actually get a very nicely done and quite useful owner's guide which I'll be making reference to as we go through this video. It has a nice picture of the preamp on the front there and the designation CTP2 cool tube. So to begin with, let's take a look at some of the features of the cool tube. We've already mentioned the fact that it uses a 12 AU7 dual triode tube and if you look on the inside of the guitar you'll actually see um, something that looks like this. This is the diagram from the back page of the manual. You can see there the actual glass tube that sticks out. Uh, some people have asked, uh, will the tube fall out or will it become loose and become intermittent? Uh, in my reading and research and talking to people who play this system, there have been no reports of the tube loosening or becoming intermittent in contact with the preamp system. Uh, in an interview, Brad Davis, uh, one of the Takamine endorsers who is a big proponent of the cool tube system, mentioned that he actually checks his guitars in uh, when he flies and they go through the entire baggage handling system and he has yet to have a tube loosen or fall out so you shouldn't have any trouble with that. On the preamp system itself you can see beginning at the top you have the cool tube knob which is used to blend the cool tube affected signal in with the dry signal from the bridge pickup. Uh, you have a small hole here which is actually used for the insertion of a tool to release the pickup from the surrounding sound choice docking port frame. It's not just for decoration. Um, you have the mid frequency knob which is used to adjust the frequency of the mid range EQ control and you have the aux pickup blend knob. Uh, this actually allows you to blend in a signal from an additional preamp. Now in the owner's manual Takamine actually states that this is intended for use with a medium impedance pickup. Now when I hear medium impedance that says to me magnetic so presumably they've designed it to work with either a magnetic sound hole pickup or some kind of magnetic soundboard transducer. I'm not sure if it will accept a piezo pickup directly. Uh, if you know and you've tried this uh, do please mention that in the comments. Below you have the EQ section. As you can see, you have a low, a mid, and a high. The mid is what us sound engineers would term semi-parametric, meaning that the bandwidth is fixed, but the frequency can be altered. And as you can see here, you can sweep this from a low of 250 hertz to a high of 4.5 kilohertz. The dot here is what Takamine consider to be the preferred frequency for most players. Uh, they don't actually tell us what this frequency is, but I suspect that it's somewhere around four to 500 hertz. Uh, we will demonstrate this shortly. At the end, you have a master fader. This is the master volume for the entire preamp. It controls the level of the dry signal 
from the onboard bridge pickup, the cool tube signal and the signal from any aux pickup that you might have connected. Below you have your battery tray. Now as you can see here the battery tray actually uh, contains the tuner to replace your batteries you pinch the tabs at the end and this drawer slides out. The drawer contains, as you can see, four AA batteries. You replace your batteries and then you slip the entire drawer back in. Battery life on the Cool2 preamp is advertised as being 24 hours, which is not a whole lot if you're gigging every night but you can also power the cool tube remotely using the cool tube power feature that is found on Takamine's Acoustic DI Plus. Of course, it means that you have to buy the Acoustic DI Plus, but that's one of the trade-offs of using a preamp with this sort of technology. You then have the tuner uh, and its associated calibration function. Now, the tuner fortunately works when the guitar is plugged in or when it is not plugged in. Uh, a single press of the tuner button wakes it up, as you can see there. Uh, like the tuners on all of Takamine's professional series pickups, the lights are really bright and you'll have no problem seeing this under stage lighting or outdoors under bright sunlight. So a single press turns the tuner on and it functions as you can see. Um, the central dot indicates in tune, arrows to the left indicate flat, and to the right indicate sharp. So let's try a low E. You can see I'm a little bit sharp there. So you can see the tuner responds quite quickly and is relatively easy to use. Compared to the tuner on the CT4B2 preamp, the indication here is left to right as opposed to up and down, which I prefer, but with all of these knobs here, I think they were doing quite well to fit in a tuner uh, with this larger display. Try another note. The tuner also has, as you can see here, a calibration function. Now what that does is it allows you to tune to an arbitrary reference pitch. So for example, let's say that you're playing with a piano which is quite flat. As we know many pianos which don't get uh, care tend to go flat over the years and retuning the piano is often not an option. So we have a choice. Do we play out of tune or do we tune to the piano? In the old days, you would have had to do that by ear. But with this function, what you do is you tune one string of the guitar to that instrument and then the tuner will automatically recalibrate itself to that reference pitch. So let me tune my A string quite flat. Now you can see the tuner is indicating flat. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the note and I'm going to press the calibration button. Okay? So as you can see, that note is now registering as the new pitch reference. What this means is that the rest of the guitar, which previously was in tune, will now register as sharp. Let's check that. All right, very sharp, of course. Your D is sharp, 
and G is also sharp. In order to reset this, you simply switch the tuner off and switch it back on. In order to switch the tuner off, you would press twice and then press again. At this point, the calibration has been reset to A440, which we can check. Our E is now in tune and our A should once again be flat. There you are. There we go. So this is your calibration function. Personally, I think this is one of the best features of this tuner. It's very easy to use and it means that you can... Um, all you need is a decent ear. As soon as you get one string of your guitar in tune with a reference pitch on the other instrument, then you can calibrate your tuner and go ahead and tune your entire guitar to that reference pitch. The other thing about the tuner is you'll see that if I press the button again, you'll see that the light begins to flash. Now what this means is that the tuner is still operational, but the output of the guitar is muted for silent tuning on stage. If you have seen my video of the CT4B2 preamp, you'll note that on that preamp, this mode is only operational when the guitar is plugged in. Not so on the cool tube preamp. The cool tube preamp operates the same way whether the guitar is plugged in or not. So in this case, even though there's nothing connected to the guitar, it's still flashing. Presumably this is for consistency, uh, especially when doing shows on stage. They don't want people to get confused between whether they press once or press twice. But just remember that if it's flashing, it means that your output signal is muted. Once again, very useful feature, uh, very stage and performance friendly. Press again, tuner turns off. Once more, tuner turns on. So that covers the basic layout of the top panel of the Cool2 preamp. Now let's have a look once again at the owner's manual and have a look at the back panel. Now, this is much easier to see here rather than trying to film through the sound hole. So we'll do it that way. Now, you can see on the back panel of the preamp, uh, apart from the tube, which is quite obvious there in the top right hand corner, you have three connections. You have the bridge pickup in, this is the signal from the onboard palathetic pickup, which is Takamine's proprietary multi-source bridge pickup system. You then have an aux pickup in. This is to allow you to connect a magnetic sound hole uh, pickup or maybe a top transducer, something like that. You'll notice that it is color-coded yellow so that you don't confuse it with the other one. You then have an output jack. This would normally be connected to the guitar's end pin jack. Um, if you have an issue with your end pin jack, uh, it is possible to plug a mini jack cable directly in here and then run that out through the sound hole bypassing the guitar's output jack. That's a useful backup feature in case you have problems. Notice that the in and outs use different connectors. They use RCA for the inputs and a mini jack for the output. This is to prevent the user uh, mixing the two up, which again, I think is very useful, uh, especially if you're needing to swap a preamp backstage under limited lighting, you'll be glad that they did that. Then, in the top left-hand corner, you can see something that is labeled the jack override switch. Now, what this does is it switches the preamp on permanently. Normally, the preamp will switch on when you plug the guitar in. But because the cool tube preamp, as you'll see, has a short warm-up time, what they've done here is they've added a switch which allows you to plug and unplug the guitar without powering the preamp down. This is presumably for professional use where they're swapping guitars on the fly and they need to 
make the changeover as quickly as they possibly can and they don't want to wait for the tube to power up and power down. The switch is accessed through the sound hole and as you can see if I just put my hand in the sound hole I can feel the tube and next to the tube is the jack override switch. I'm going to push it in now and you can see that you have the startup sequence. Now, you'll notice that that took approximately five seconds, so it is a significant amount of time if you're trying to do a show, and this is presumably why they added that switch. Uh, this is a good time to discuss the indicators on the right side of the panel. As you can see just now, there's a um, orange warm-up indicator, then this uh, OPER is short for operation, meaning that all systems go okay to rock and roll. And at the bottom, you have a low battery indicator. Uh, this is actually colored red and it will light up when it senses that the batteries are about to go flat. Takamine, do not tell us how long you have once the low battery indicator comes on, but suffice it to say that once it comes on, it's time to change your batteries. Now before we go on to demonstrate the sound of the Cool2 preamp, I'd like to discuss just a couple of concerns that people have with the actual preamp itself. The first is that, will the tube get so hot that it damages the wood around the preamp? Uh, the answer to this is no. According to Takamine, they run the tube at very, very low voltages and as a result, it never glows or gets hot. It runs at 2 to 3 degrees, I presume that's 2 to 3 degrees Celsius above ambient, which means that if you're playing in a room that is, for example, 28 degrees Celsius, your tube would run at about 30 degrees. Now, considering that the human body is on... Um, a normal day 36.9 degrees the guitar is at greater risk from your body heat than it is from the heat given off by the cool tube so no concerns on that score the other thing is this looks like a real heavy preamp um, will it damage the wood around the preamp frame uh, that's a very good question now as you can see because Takamine have designed the sound choice docking port to have an integrated uh, plastic frame, the frame is actually taking the weight of the uh, preamp rather than the surrounding wood. I do know people who have retrofitted this preamp into guitars which have solid sides. In other words, what they've done is they've had a shop or they've done it themselves, they've actually cut a big hole into the side of that guitar and they've installed this preamp. Subsequently, they have reported issues with cracking or splitting of the wood at the corners of the preamp. So be warned, if you have a guitar which does not have this fitted from the factory or does not have the sound choice docking port, I would not recommend retrofitting this into that guitar. You'd be better off looking at something like the Takamine TLD line driver pickup which does not involve you cutting a huge hole into the side of your guitar. What about the looks? Well, Takamines are what they are. I agree that this is a very large pickup and it's very obvious. Um, if you don't like the looks, once again, there's the option to go with the line driver pickup, which uh, hides inside the guitar and does not involve any cutting at all into the side of the guitar itself. What about the weight of the preamp? The weight of the preamp is fairly substantial. You've got four AA batteries you've got the tube and you've got a fairly deep preamp behind this faceplate. When I pick up my guitar, this particular one is a TSF48C, I do sometimes feel something shifting around inside, which I don't really like. Um, but 
that's par for the course. Uh, if you don't like the weight, you can replace the preamp with either the CT4B2 or the CT4DX preamp. Now let's go on and have a listen to the sound of this preamp. Just before we do the demonstration, I'll show you the guitar that I'm going to be using. Uh, this is a Takamine TSF48C, a uh, solid spruce top, rosewood back and sides. Uh, it does have a solid rosewood back. Uh, this is part of the Takamine Santa Fe series, and it has the Southwest American theme there in the rosette, as well as in these beautiful fingerboard inlays. This is one of my uh, favorite Takamine guitars. It has an NEX scale down jumbo and as you will hear is a very very versatile general purpose body style good for finger style, good for strumming, good for all round playing. The Takamine TSF 48C. And before we do the demonstration of the guitar I'll just show you my signal chain for this review. The guitar is plugged directly into a radial JDI passive direct box. For the cool tube preamp, be aware that the output is extremely hot. In certain tests, they've determined that the cool tube output can be as high as 7 volts, which is actually a full line level. It's something like the output which you'd get from a mains powered electronic keyboard. Um, this is especially true if the player is an aggressive strummer or an aggressive flat picker. So I recommend using a passive direct box and preferably one which has a really good transformer to handle those transients. The radial JDI, as you know, has a wonderful Jensen transformer inside which not only sounds great but it handles high levels really, really well. The direct box is plugged directly into channel 3 of my Mackie 1202 VLZ Pro. The low cut filter is off so that you can hear the wonderful low end that the preamp generates. The trim control is set at about 11 o'clock. Once again, be a bit conservative with your gain settings because you've got a real hot signal coming into your PA. EQ is set completely flat. The channel knob is set at unity gain and the mix control is also at unity gain. The output of the mixer is connected directly to the video camera. There is no compression or additional processing apart from a limiter on the camera's input to prevent the audio from distorting. So let's begin with the EQ section. In this case, we will keep the cool tube completely off. And because this guitar does not have a second pickup system installed, we will keep the aux pickup knob turned all the way down. Our first EQ setting will be with the EQ completely flat. Now let's begin to have a look at the EQ. As you can see here, you have plus and minus 12 decibels on each slider. In my opinion, this is an awful lot of EQ. In fact, it might even be too much EQ. In order to give a fair demonstration of this, I'm going to demonstrate each control at its halfway point and then at its full cut or boost uh, level. This will take a while, and in order to keep things moving, I'll just play a short fingerstyle passage, and then I'll play a short strumming passage. So here we go. Our first EQ setting will be with the bass boosted halfway.
Our next EQ setting will be with the bass boosted all the way. Our next EQ setting will be with the bass cut 6 decibels. Our next EQ setting will be with the bass cut 12 decibels. We will now return the bass to flat and we'll proceed to the mid-range control. Now the mid-range control, as you know, is semi-parametric, meaning that you can choose the mid-frequency that you want. Uh, we'll begin with it set to this dot, which Takamine says is the optimal frequency for most players, and we will boost the mid-range 6 decibels. We'll now boost the mid-range 12 decibels. Staying here, we will now sweep the mid-range knob to 250 hertz. We'll now sweep the mid-range knob all the way to 4.5 kilohertz.
we will now return the knob to Takamine's default setting and we will cut the mid-range 6 decibels. We will now cut the mid-range 12 decibels. Staying with the mid-range cut 12 decibels, we will sweep the frequency to 250 hertz. We'll now sweep the mid-range to 4.5 kilohertz. We'll now reset the mid-range to zero and boost the treble six decibels. We'll now boost the treble 12 decibels. We'll now cut the treble 6 decibels. And finally, we'll cut the treble 12 decibels.
Now let's move on to what I know all of you have been waiting for and that's the demonstration of the cool tube feature. Now what they do is, is that they run 3 volts through the tube on the inside of the guitar and the tube is set up in a sort of effects loop. What that means is, is that you can blend various amounts of the tube driven signal into the dry signal that is coming through the guitar's preamp. So as you can see around the outside of the cool tube control you have various percentages. So at the setting of 25% what that means is that 25% of your signal is going through the tube and 75% is not. If you have the older CTP1 cool tube the graphics on this knob are a little bit different. They actually go from 0 to 10. I find this percentage is uh, much more useful in trying to understand what is happening to your signal. At the opposite end, at 100%, the entire signal from your guitar is going through the cool tube. What effect does this have on your sound? Because the tube adds harmonics and it adds a slight amount of distortion, especially at the higher, uh, the higher settings, you'll notice two things as I turn the knob up. The first thing is you'll notice that the sound warms up. This warming up is very, very difficult to describe in words, but it's very similar to the effect that you get when comparing a tube amplifier and a solid state amplifier. The second thing is that you should not notice an increase in volume. That's because the engineers at Takamine have calibrated the system such that you will get a warming of the tone without an increase in overall volume. With the earlier CTP1 preamp, this was not quite so well worked out. So you will notice a bit of an increase as you increase the cool tube knob. For this demonstration, we will leave the EQ flat. So first of all, just to remind you, here's the sound of the guitar with no EQ. We will now increase the cool tube to 25%. I personally on this guitar like this setting for general playing as well as hard strumming. will now increase the cool tube setting to 50%. This means that half of your signal is being affected and the other half is passing through dry. We'll now increase the cool tube knob to 75%. And finally, 
we'll set the cool tube to 100%. Now this setting gives an extremely warm and some would say somewhat thick and fuzzy tone that probably won't cut through so well but if you're playing solo and especially if you're playing a lot of finger style sounds awesome. Check it out. So what do we think of the sound? Well, there's a couple of things that you should be aware of if you're going to choose a guitar with the Cool Tube preamp. The first is that the preamp itself does have a certain amount of background noise compared to the CT4B2 and the CT4DX preamps, which are solid state. The Cool Tube does have a small amount of hiss. Uh, you'll probably hear it, uh, especially when the treble is boosted. The second thing is that the cool tube feature, although it warms up the sound wonderfully and as you can hear it makes it sound like Godzilla as uh, Brad Davis likes to say, it also makes the guitar a little bit muddy sounding and because of this it can be hard for the guitar to cut through a mix especially if you're playing in a very loud and very complex band say with a couple other guitars, keyboards, ham and organ, a large drum kit, that kind of thing. So if you're playing in that kind of situation, it's probably best to run the cool tube a little bit lower, say 25, 30, 35 percent. If on the other hand, you're a fingerstyle solo artist, you can crank that thing all the way and just go to town. Now just before we conclude this review, I've got a surprise for you. Ta-da! A second guitar. I thought this review is so important that I'd run a couple of guitars by you just so that you can hear the difference. Now this is a real Rolls Royce. This as you can see is a Takamine TF250 SMC SB. In other words, it's a full-size jumbo with solid spruce top and gorgeous flame maple back and sides finish in a sunburst pattern that's what the SB stands for it has these lovely beautiful inlays going up the fingerboard and of course it's equipped with the cool tube preamp system this I believe for many years was one of Takamine's flagship guitars and it is of course sadly discontinued but it lives on in the form of the Toby Keith signature model. The Toby Keith signature model is basically this guitar with a CT4B2 preamp, a laminate back as opposed to the solid back on this guitar and some Toby Keith bling. Now this guitar in my opinion is where the Cool Tube preamp really really shines because the maple has less in the way of overtones the dry sound is somewhat, well, dry. When you add the cool tube in, it warms up the sound of the guitar in a wonderful way without making it muddy. So again, if you're thinking about buying a cool tube equipped guitar, try a maple guitar. You might find that that is just a marriage made in heaven. So here we go. First of all, we'll play you the guitar with the EQ set flat.
So there you go, that's my review of the Takamine CTP2 Cool2 preamp. What do I think? Well, I think that the Cool2 preamp is a little bit like salt and pepper. Used in moderation, it gives a wonderful uh, addition to your sound. It warms the tone up, it adds more in the way of harmonics. It's also important to note that the sound of the Cool2 does uh, vary from guitar to guitar, which it should, right? On the Spruce Rosewood guitars, you could hear the guitar naturally had more in the way of harmonics to begin with, so cranking the cool tube all the way gave a sound that was really quite overwhelming. On the other hand, with the maple guitar, the guitar has a drier sound to begin with, more focus on the fundamental, so adding the cool tube added in harmonics that were not there to begin with. So you'll need to mix and match. In terms of uh, disadvantages to the preamp, you do have the weight of the preamp, especially if you have a big bruiser of a guitar like this, it can add um, quite a bit to the weight and uh, make an already heavy guitar even heavier. There is also the issue of the battery life, which if you're a professional player is definitely significant. Uh, you may want to invest in the Takamine Acoustic Di Plus, which will allow you to power the cool tube electronics remotely. It also means that you can take the batteries out of your preamp and lighten the load on the guitar. This is Bruno Luz for GLB Productions. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any comments or would like to share your own experience with the cool tube preamp, do weigh in in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.